My name is Warwick Brownlow Pike and I'm a puppeteer. I first became obsessed with puppets when I was about two years old. I was watching repeats of The Muppet Show on BBC One and, uh, and we recorded them on VHS and I'd watch them over and over and over again and um, I wore the tape out, totally wore the tape out and my mum and dad bought me puppets for Christmas with Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy and stuff like that and I'd just be playing with these puppets all the time and annoying anybody that would listen. Not a new lady already. Have you learned nothing from the past 24 hours? So I perform Mary and the Cat and he is this Iranian type mad cat, the best friend of Nelson. I don't know why Nelson is his best friend, because he gets him into all sort of bother and stuff. Some of our best friends are Africans, by which I mean none of our best friends are Africans. We don't even know any Africans. We're worried we're racist. Hello! So this is Marion the cat, and he is a typical rod puppet. So he has two arms on rods that we do things like this with, and then he has ears that have a mechanism and eyes that are controlled by a, a small lever inside the head. This is the inside of Marin's dustbin and there are three dustbins and I've set up a stall so that I can reach the very top and, and get Marion out of the top of the dustbin. So I spend most of my time like this, stretched up and out. And I'm watching this small TV monitor here and that shows me exactly where he's looking so I can get the eye line right, although I normally get it wrong. But so I can tell if he's looking at Nelson or Destiny or up at Carly. I'm also hidden from everyone so I can sit in there and just chill out and sleep and nobody knows, they can only see my legs. When I perform him he, I kind of think of like he's one of those big uh, theme park suit characters that shimmies about and has look a really big body and he's big and fat and bulky and it's quite cartoony as well, I suppose. All your lovely wisdom is gone! So when we're performing, we get all the scripts in advance, and not only that, we also get the audio track, um, which Adam has directed with all of the voice cast, who do a tremendous job of giving us some really rich stuff to work with. Um, something that occurred to me on this series is, is that I, I think they make some very bold um, performance choices vocally. It made me kind of think, actually, we, we need to be making sort of bold performance choices with the puppets as well. Of <laughs> Rodney King. Talk about beating a confession out of me. <laughs> so a normal morning, we come in, have breakfast in the workshop, get the puppets ready for the day. Should she do my hands with the wine? For the yeah. For the wine? Yeah. Walk out onto set, and we'll be holding, we'll be standing up holding the puppets on the racer uh, up above our heads. The set is raised so that the puppet characters look at the right height. And in theatre you, you look at the puppet, but in TV you look at a monitor which basically gives you a, a shot of what the camera's seeing. So whenever you're doing TV puppetry you always play to that shot. Um, and so you make yourself look right in the frame, you, you can see where it looks like your puppet's looking. Ooh, Agent Fogel. Oh, it was nothing. When we're filming you will sometimes see some puppeteers, you know, you see the expression of the character on their face as well as on the puppet's face. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be do, sort of physically doing things with their own bodies that mimic what the puppet's doing. And yeah, and sometimes you can have something where nothing's really going on with the performer's face and with their body, they're very relaxed. But up here, it's a haywire, the puppet's going crazy or is racked with emotion. The thing that people say is obviously you don't want to have a situation whereby the puppeteer's going through everything um, you know, and uh, but the puppet, it's not transferring up to the puppet and you're not seeing that on screen. It'll be urine retract infection, well that's a... If, you, if the camera's on, I spent any, any amount of time, even if it's not running, <laughs> even if the camera's not running well. Oh, but you can see yourself shameless. in the monitor, if you yeah. can see yourself in the monitor. Yeah, we're shameless, and everyone does it. And, and that's you just what's play around. around. You know, that's just play around. And you discover things, you discover things in those sort of playing around with the puppet yeah. moments that make it up onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got several different types of puppet on the show um, that work in different ways. We've got basic hand puppets, so you've got your head up in your hand up in the head, and you've got rods attached to the wrists. Although we have got some little mechanisms inside that allow us to blink, and uh, a couple of cable controls for the ears. <gasps> They're coming. There is also mechanical puppets like Carly. Carly was sort of the first, and still is the most sort of mechanical puppet that we use on the show. We were really nervous about her because we didn't want her to look mechanical alongside all of these other puppets that had literally had somebody's hand inside them and so they look very organic. Uh, then we've also got um, uh, sort of a style of glove puppet. So we've got our rodents, like our rats and our squirrels, which are pretty much operated like this. So you've got your hand up in the head, uh, two fingers in the head, and uh, you know, another finger in each hand. The, the first character really in this series that we did that was largely latex was the chimp, and he was significant because his whole face was latex. 
And as a result of that, we also we use the same technique for the tortoise and the goldfish. There's only one recorded instance of a fatality caused by a flying cat's eye. So this is the Kali puppet, and now we've got a mixture of fur and feathers on all of the birds. So this has sort of become our standard uh, bird type. <laughs> We also slightly tinkered with her beak to make a different colour to make it read slightly better. But also we put her her head itself on a mechanism um, which allows us to uh, move it right up in the base of the head where you would normally get your own sort of head movement from. And you can sort of see how that relates to Carly. Yes! Boom! Boom! Shakalak! Like all our blinks, they... Um, uh, sometimes when you get blinks on characters, they sort of come straight down. All of our sort of, you'll notice, they sort of roll out to the side, which gives the characters a little bit more expression that we can play with. The feet are a complete cheat. I think only maybe once or twice have we ever actually attached Carly's feet to her. Also, sometimes we cheat her fly-in, so she'll do a little mini land. And so that means that if the camera's not looking at her feet, the camera can follow her down. And then once she's on her feet, you get the impression that the feet were attached to her all along rather. Um, whereas in actual fact, she's sort of coming down to meet her feet. Oi! You're on my perch! My perch now. I suggest you find another perch. We've got three different versions of the wings for Carly this series. Um, we only had two in the first series. Um, the two that we had for the first series were the uh, static um, posable wings that she's got on her at the moment. But then the rest of the time, and most of the time, um, she has these mechanical wings on, um, which... Uh, again, on, on brake cables like the rest of her mechanisms. And a performer stands behind, usually Matt, and uh, performs the wings from behind. In series one, Carly seemed to get all the props, and uh, it was very hard to rig anything to her, it was very hard to handle anything with her. And so for, th so for this series, we, we, we made a set of uh, floppy wings, which are basically just foam with the feathers coming out of them. They move really nicely, you can see that. It's something when we first saw it, we all went, Ooh. Um, and that basically means that um, because they're foam, you can easily pin into them, um, get her handling a prop, fix the wings onto the body using the poppers that we normally do, um, and have her handle something, and her wings can move around with no problem. Nelson, you prick, she's taking you for a ride. So the puppets start out uh, as a sketch. Very initial sketch, sometimes they're just sort of scribbles and doodles really on a... Broad, sort of just to get an idea of the character. Really broad ideas. Shapes and what it's going to look like. Um, and then what we have started doing with this particular show is building little models. Little, very rough, they're very, very rough models. They're not beautifully sculpted or anything mm -hmm. like that, but they're kind of the, the right shape that the puppet's going to be. Uh, they're the right... We, we use a fur, which is a very cheap fur, available from any corner, you know, corner store, fabric shop. But it's just to get an idea of colours and so we can mm -hmm. try stuff out. And then we'll send a photograph of that off to the production team. Um, they'll look at it sort of give us the A or nay, tell us what works and what isn't working, and then we can go on to building the proper puppet. The puppet starts out pretty much like that. So this particular one's going to be a dog puppet. Uh, this is reticulated foam. It's brilliant for building puppets in. It's very flexible, it's very strong. Long before the fur goes on, we decide sort of roughly what our character is going to look like. And we'll place some hemispheres on for eyes. We'll again sort of play around with where the pupils are going to be. Um, we'll try out different shapes for noses, different colours for noses. And then what Yestin does is he sculpts all these beautiful noses and lips. It's true. I do do that. He does do that. He does it beautifully. Uh, anything that, that <coughs> sort of needs to be a different material other than the foam or the fabric that we're going to finish it in. So these are kind of things that make the puppets look really nice. Also, the characters have got blinks uh, in them, which, uh, which the puppeteer can work on the inside with their middle finger. Never. Genuinely never. 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 Likewise, um, the the puppets of uh, the principal characters have moving ears, um, and uh, these ones can move independently. We've got an underclass of animals, which is like squirrels, rodents, hedgehogs. The puppets still work in the same way with the with the head on the on our two fingers, and a little mechanism here which runs off a, a shutter release cable, um, which is actually used for photography. Um, these are uh, our, our rat uh, hand puppets. They're the rats don't normally speak, but they're there as this sort of presence. Um, they watch the things that go on, sometimes they link scenes together. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun to perform, everyone always fights over who gets to do the rats. All our secondary characters, like this one here, which is our Labrador, they're all now coming on, we've managed to get all the fur on them, we're getting all the fur trimmed down, and we'll use scissors and we'll use some hair trimmers as well, and just basically try and bring a lot more definition into it. And then when that's done, 
we'll start putting ink on it as well. So we'll also put some ink around the eyes, we'll put some ink around the nose, uh, around the lips, just to give it a bit more depth so it's not all just one uniform colour. This is Salty Pepper. Hello. <laughs> Anyone got any crystal meth? <laughs> God, he's funny! God, you're funny! Ow. <laughs> the street is my track. The buildings are my hurdles. Gravity is my opponent. I am a skilled athlete. And I always, yes, always, land on my feet. Yeah. But then you are a cat, so, uh, not that impressive. A puppet show for adults. Mongrels, coming soon to BBC Three.